in the house. <laughs> Anybody glad to be in the house? God? Anybody glad to be in the house? God? Nobody had to make me come into the house. God. David said I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord.
comes back up with him, with more of his power, with more of his presence. Thank you, Jesus.
amen. Before I start the so we got the baddest band over here in the corner, amen. Come on, let's give them a hand. Every Sunday at 10 a.m. for our Sunday school, praise and worship at 11 a.m. Our midweek connection is every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Um, we have birthdays this month to Satanya Bullock. We have Marcus Williams, Alexia King, Bryson Halsey, Kanaya Tate, Lavonda Taylor, and um, Eden Grace, Eden Scott. She's Her birthday is today. Amen. October the 30th and the 31st, we have Pastor Scott will be preaching on a Tuesday and a Wednesday night at 7.30 um, in Fuquay, Marina, North Carolina, at Pleasant Hill United Church of Christ. Amen, at 7.30. Um, also, he will be preaching on Sunday evening, um, November the 4th, at 6 p.m. at Agape International, and that's Nightdale, North Carolina, Pastor Braxton Bowser. Amen. Give yourself the quarter. What time is it? All the time. Come on, musicians. I want to be a blessing to God as God has been a, such a blessing to you. Amen. God does love a cheerful giver. Yes, yes. If you look it up, cheerful in the Greek means jovial, happy. Yes. You should be happy to give to God. Yes. Excited to give. Yes. When you're ready to make that next purchase, remember, I got to give to God. And don't let that purchase hinder you from giving to God because God wants to bless you. He wants to bless you. And if by chance we're living in a society where people don't carry a lot of cash, I don't like to carry cash myself. It seems like when I, when I carry a lot of cash, I spend it. So I don't like to carry it. So, but just by chance, if you came here and you didn't have any cash, you can pay by way of Cash App. And that is um, the way church, 6600. Cash out the way 6600 so you can contribute electronically. If you have your offering, put it in your right hand as we apply the blessing to the offering. I should stand, raise it in your right hand. We believe God, and also today is Vision Sunday. Look at somebody say Vision Sunday. You to remember your pledges and pay accordingly. Amen. Dear Lord God, my Heavenly Father, God, we stand, God, we deceive, God. We realize in God, we're doing it in obedience. Realizing that we're trusting in your word. Help the seed to unlock doors that otherwise be shut. Help it, God to make mercy fall on him all of the days that I like, God. Let the believer walk in divine favor. Bless it like you bless it. The two fish and the five loaves of bread. And God will forever praise and will forever magnify you in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray. Amen. Numbers. Further service in the hands of us.
Pastor Marcus Scott, CBA. do we have right now? I need somebody to open up their mouth and make some noise. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That's alright, let's go a little bit deeper. The devil is a liar. Jesus is the Messiah. Yeah. 
In the name 
if you're going to take over a house, you got to bind the strong man. Hallelujah. You got to bind me first. But when I got out this morning, I put my war clothes on. When I got out this morning,
And even when you have it signified by standing, say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Genesis 27 and verse 18. And the Bible says, And he came unto his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, who art thou, my son? And Jacob said unto his father, I am Esau, thy firstborn. I've done according as thou obeyest me. Arise, I pray thee, sit and eat of my venison, that thy soul may bless me. And Isaac said unto his son, How is it that thou hast found it so quickly, my son? And he said, Because the Lord thy God brought it to me. And Isaac said unto Jacob, Come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son, whether thou be my very son Esau or not. And Jacob went near unto Isaac his father, and he felt, and he said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned him not, because his hands were hairy, as his brother Esau's hands, so he blessed him. And he said, Art thou my very son, Esau? And he said, I am. And he said, Bring it near to me, and I will eat of my son's venison, that my soul may bless thee. And he brought it near him, and he did eat. And he brought him wine, and then he drank. Quickly to verse 30. And it came to pass, as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob, Jacob was yet scarce gone from the presence of Isaac his father, and Esau his brother came in from hunting. And he also made savory meat and brought it unto his father, said unto his father, Let my father arise, eat of his son Vincent, that thy soul may bless me. And Isaac his father said unto him, Who art thou? And he said, I am thy son, thy firstborn Esau. Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said, Who, where is he that have taken venison, venison and bought it to me? And I have eaten of all before thou camest and have blessed him. Yea, and he shall be blessed. Esau heard the words of his father and cried with a great and exceeding cry, bitter cry, and said unto his father, Bless me, even me also, O my father. And he said, Thy brother came with subtility, and I'm taking away thy blessing. Today, I want to begin again on the second installment of our series, Surviving an Identity Crisis. Today, I want to talk about Identity theft. Identity theft. Father, may we do no damage to your words, but speak that which is sound, which is right, which is true. Let us speak as the oracles of God. Give us a revelation. We may understand what is this that you are saying to us in this time. And we'll forever give you the glory and honor and praise. In Jesus' name I pray, and all God's people say amen. You may be seated in the presence of our God. Praise the Lord. We have been in this interesting series, amen, dealing with surviving an identity crisis. Last week, we talked about, praise the Lord, contradictions, praise the Lord, in your identity, how the enemy, praise the Lord, will contradict what God has said about you. We talked about how, amen, God has already spoken and said that this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And praise the Lord. 
first thing say in question to Jesus, if thou be the Son of God. And so we understood to know and to stand on God's word even when who we are is questioned. Today, praise the Lord, I want to go a little deeper. And I want to talk about identity theft. Identity theft is probably one of the uh, greatest crimes being committed in America right now. In fact, statistics tells us nearly 60 million Americans were affected or became victims of identity theft in 2017. Identity theft is simply the deliberate use of someone else's identity, usually as a method to gain a financial advantage or obtain credit and other benefits in the other person's name. Anybody ever been a victim of identity theft? Anybody ever took something from you in your name, praise the Lord? And some of our parents, I grew up in the projects. And you will not mind a lot of parents doing identity theft with their children. I know Junior, Junior can't even walk. And he had cable vision in his name. He had a cable vision. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And now you're going to use up his credit when he gets grown, praise the Lord. He can't even, praise the Lord, buy a bedroom suit. Amen. Hallelujah. Identity there. Yes. Satan wants us to try and be like everybody else, mm -hmm. but who God has called us to be. That's right. Come on, somebody. Yes. Not realizing that God has already blessed what He has called you to be. You are already blessed. But the enemy wants you to believe that if I can be like this person, or if I can do like this individual, that I will be blessed. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. In fact, praise the Lord, have you ever met folk that have what you call a copycat spirit? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, no matter what you do, they try to do it better, praise the yeah. Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. If you wear a certain thing, then you'll find out, praise the Lord, you'll have, they'll have, you, know, you buy Praise the Lord, a certain type of a vehicle or a car, amen, find out that they got the same thing going for them. The sisters hate it, praise God. They hate it so bad that if they buy an outfit and find out that another woman got it, praise God, they'll go back in the house and change clothes. Because they want to be an individual. Oh, I know I got it. But there are folks that are so, praise the Lord, unhappy with who they are, what their lot is in life, that they look at you and decide that your life is better than mine. And so they systematically try to assume your identity. Either they do it, praise the Lord, Hallelujah, by trying to get close to you. Mm -hmm. But when really everybody that gets close to you is not getting close to you because they want to be your friend. Right. Amen. Sometimes folks will get close to you because they want to know who your friends are. Right. Y'all don't like my talking. Yeah. And, and in getting close to your friends, I don't have to really know you because I'm just trying to replace you. Yes. And so if I can get in the equation, praise God. Now remember, you brought me into the equation, but if I get in the equation, what I can do, I will work my magic. Uh -huh. And by the time I'm done in the relationship, I will have everybody looking at you like you a thief or something. And now you on the outside, now I'm the friend. Yes. Do like you do, say like you say. Amen. So, so you have to be careful who you tell about your relationship problem. About your husband and all the trouble y'all is having. Because there's that one girlfriend that listens to everything that you say. Praise the Lord. Y'all don't like my talk. 
and she's trying to be everything, praise the Lord, that he wants so that she can replace you. I don't like my talking. Can I talk for just a few minutes? Hallelujah. Every move that you make, you cannot always announce it and tell everybody. Because there are some people that want to sabotage your move before you can. Today we want to talk about a young man by the name of Jacob. And Jacob was uh, the youngest of a set of twins. Now Isaac, praise the Lord, was Abraham's son of promise. Yes. And Isaac, praise the Lord, thank you Jesus, married Rebecca. Mm -hmm. And Rebecca was buried, couldn't have a child. And so the Bible says that Isaac entreated God. He, praise the Lord, prayed to God on the behalf of his wife that God would open up her womb. Yes. And God did. God not only you know, caused her to conceive, but God allowed her to conceive twins. Amen. I would say God knew how to do something. Amen? Amen. <laughs> and while she is expecting, praise the Lord, she feels a struggle going on on the inside. Praise the Lord. And God speaks to her, speaks to Rebecca, and says, there are two nations in your womb. One will be stronger than the other. And the elder will serve the younger. So she is now privy to some of the knowledge of the plan of God, amen, for those two children in her womb. And lo and behold, when she goes into labor, praise the Lord, she has one child come out. And when he come out, he is all red and hairy. Praise the Lord. He's he like a furball coming out of there. Amen. And she names him Esau, which means hairy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then, praise the Lord, as he comes out, praise the Lord, attached to his heel is the next baby. And this baby, she names him Jacob. And the name Jacob in the Hebrew means heel catcher uh, or supplanter, trickster, con artist. Amen. Don't trust a Jacob. That's, that's kind of what that means. And so, praise the Lord, even at his birth, he is given an identity that, praise the Lord, he doesn't even have anything to do with. But just because he comes out of the womb, praise the Lord, catching his brother's heel. Hallelujah. How many of us have been given identities as children, praise the Lord, that has followed us, amen, throughout our life? Amen. They used to say that old folk could put bad mouth on you. Y'all heard about bad mouth? Praise the Lord. And, and they would tell you, you ain't going to be nothing. Or you going to be like your dad. You going to be, and you know, depending on who my daddy is, praise God. Right. Usually when they say you're going to be like your daddy, it's not, it's not a good thing. That's right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But they usually, amen, try to speak to your destiny by the name that they give you. Be careful what you call your children. Be careful, praise the Lord how you speak to them when you are in anger. Amen. Because in anger, praise the Lord, you can release a spirit over their life that they will struggle with. Yes. Hallelujah. Well on into their grown days. Y'all don't like my talk. Right. If you are always criticizing your child, you will give them a feeling of inadequacy. Yes. They will always feel like that they're not good enough, that they don't measure up, praise the Lord. And let me tell you something. It's worse, amen. It's, it, it's better if you just go on and give the child a whooping and send them on their way. Praise God. Then to say something that will grow up in them because that thing that grows up in them will limit them. Every time they attempt to try to do something, the word that you have told them has a way of being like a king. Around them. Amen. What you call matters. Mm -hmm. Y'all again. 
So Jacob gets the name Heel Catcher. Come here, con artist. Come here, little heel catcher. Come here, trickster. Wow. Come here, trick. Come here, come here. Y'all don't like my talk. And all of his life, praise the Lord, he, a man, has to live with the stigma of being a dishonest man. Hallelujah. Can I talk for a few minutes? So one day he's, they've grown, and praise the Lord, his brother is in stark contrast to him. Because Esau, let me tell you about Esau. Esau is the big brother that everybody envies. Esau is the captain of the football team. Esau, praise the Lord, is the man's man. He is daddy's pride and joy. The Bible tells us this. Amen. That, 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 because he was a hunter of the field, praise God, how he is loved by his daddy. But Jacob was a mama's boy. The Bible says that he was a plain man, meaning he, he, didn't, he wasn't fuzzy. He didn't have hair like Esau, praise the Lord. But he, he was a plain man. And then he was a bookworm. He dwelt among the tents. He wasn't somebody that you would see out there, praise God, with a rifle in his hand getting ready to take down a book, praise the Lord. He, he, he's in, he not fishing, brothers. He's, he's in there, praise the Lord, trying to draw, writing poetry. Amen. And, and so for that reason, praise the Lord, he's his mother's favorite, but he's not his father's favorite. Can I talk for just a few minutes? It is a hurting thing to, to, to realize, and I know parents, we a lot of times we say that we don't play favors and we love all our children the same. And, and, and we do love all of our children, praise the Lord, but some parents, praise the Lord, do play favorites, amen. Children are not dumb. They know, praise God, when you like Susie better than Johnny, praise the Lord. And, and usually it's because Susie is always at your beck and call. When you call Susie, she's there, Johnny, on the spot to do exactly what you need. And so you feel. And why can't you be more like Susie? And any time, praise the Lord, someone is treated like they're less than the other person, it puts a, an identity crisis on their life because they feel like that they have to measure up to somebody else, praise God, in order to be something great, praise the Lord. And it is in that feeling of inadequacy that Satan plays in your mind, praise the Lord, and makes you feel like if I could just be so-and-so, hallelujah, glory to God, that I would be blessed and I would be good. And so you spend your life trying to obtain to the life of so-and-so and never ever being happy where God Place you and what God has done for you. Y'all don't like my job. When you get in that amen predicament, praise the Lord, you are never happy. Hallelujah. You are never satisfied. Everything that somebody else has always looks better than yours. The grass always looks greener on the other side. You're consistently criticizing what you have and trying to praise what somebody else has. You ever found people like that? They always criticize what they got, but they're praising what the next man has. And, and you have forgotten a secret that if you go home and praise what you got, it'll look just as good as what the next man got. Brother, stop comparing your wife and man to brother feeling good wife. But brother feeling good wife, she cooked meatloaf every night. And brother feeling good wife, she looked like this and she looked. If you would go home, amen, and praise your wife, hallelujah to God, my God, you have a good home. Why can't you be like so and so? Why? No, 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 no. Your children to you should be the best and the greatest children in the world. My wife is the most beautiful woman on the face of the earth. <laughs> if you feel that way and you believe that way, you ain't looking for nobody else. You don't want nobody else. Is that right? That's right. I mean, I, I, I ain't saying no sisters up. There ain't no bad sisters out 
and they, 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 they look good. But I'm committed. I'm sold out to what I got. Uh, uh, you understand what I'm saying? And see, when you when you satisfied, you don't want nothing else. It's like if I'm if I'm already full grip, praise God, you can put something in front of me that smells delicious. It's good. But if I'm already full, I can't eat it. It's only when you go somewhere hungry, praise the Lord. And see, the devil knows when you're hungry. Esau came out the field and he was hungry, and Jacob was waiting right there for him cooking. always knew that Esau was the next in line yes. to get the blessing because of his birthright. And he always knew that daddy loved Esau. Yes. If I could have been born first, maybe daddy would have loved me. Yes. And so one day, pray the Lord, Jacob is cooking and Esau is hunting. And maybe Esau must have had low blood sugar or something because he come back, amen, pray the Lord, out of the field. When he came up out of the field, praise the Lord, he was so hungry, he felt like he was just going to die. He wasn't going to die, but he just felt like he was going to die. And Jacob happens to conveniently be out there cooking some beans, some lentils, praise the Lord, some red stew, praise God. He's cooking, praise the Lord. And let me tell you something. When you're really hungry, anything, amen, smells good. I lived in Walnut Terrace, praise the Lord, and across the street from Walnut Terrace was the dog food place. So, so, so it be. Praise God. And I knew what it was, and whenever I smelled it, it stank, praise God. But folk would be coming in, boy, that smelled like some chicken around there. That smelled good. And I'm like, hey, that, that, that. But they was hungry. When you're hungry for something, Satan, praise the Lord, tries to place it right in front of you so that you can eat it, praise the Lord. And many times our hunger overrides, amen, our good common sense, amen, for what God has is greater for us. Usually in a hungry moment, we will settle for less than God's best. Look straight in front of me. Don't look beside me, praise the Lord. But in a moment of hunger, Sometimes you'll marry somebody that God didn't intend for you to have. But you was hungry. You was hungry. Y'all don't like my talk. Praise the Lord. You, 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 you jump on a career that you wanted, praise God, that, that you really didn't want, but you was hungry, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. A hungry man. You can get a hungry man. You can lead him down a path. They, they call it thirsty today. Isn't that what they say? You, you, you thirsty, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Don't, don't ever let the devil know you're hungry. Don't ever let the devil know that you got a little thirst about yourself. Be, be, be hungry, praise the Lord, but wait until you get what you're really supposed to have. Hallelujah. But see, Esau, praise the Lord, wasn't worried about his birthright. Because at that time, he wasn't, praise God, mature enough to understand and know, praise the Lord, what all his birthright inquired. And so he, he comes, praise the Lord, to Jacob and says, give me some of that stew before I die. I'm going somewhere with this, y'all. Praise the Lord. And Jacob already got the plan. He said, okay, I'll tell you what you do. Sell me your birthright. If you give me your birthright, I'll give you these beans. A trade. The Bible says Esau despises, but he hated, which means he didn't, praise God, value the fact that he was set up in line. Why is that? I want to tell you. Because from the beginning, God had already spoken that Jacob, praise the Lord, would be the one that would be blessed. Yes. That the younger, the elder would serve the younger. Jacob was already set up to be blessed, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And, 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 and so from your mother's womb, you're already set up to be blessed. God already has his hand laid upon you. And, and, and that's the thing that the enemy tries, praise the Lord, to get you to miss that you are already blessed. That you don't have to be the next Michael Jordan. You don't have to be the next T.D. Jakes or the next Billy Graham or the next whoever. You can be the 
the first whoever you are, praise the Lord, and be glad that God made you because there is blessing and favor, amen, behind your name. Can I talk for just a few more minutes? And so, praise the Lord, he sells him the birthright. Now, can you imagine giving away a million dollar birthright for a bowl of beans? Praise the Lord. But the funny thing about it is, praise the Lord, how many times do we sell out something great for something that don't even have no value? I want to be like this, and it don't even have no value. I, I want to change my identity for somebody that looks like they're having fun and what they're doing don't even have no value right. for what God called me to be, who I am. Praise God. You ought to look at who you are and where you come from and your birthright and what God has done in your life. And the enemy is steady trying to give you things to make you exchange who you are. Make you forget who you are. Make you forget where you came from. Make you forget, praise the Lord, that God's hand is all over your life. Always for something that's quick, fast, and in hurt. So, praise the Lord, he sells him the birthright, sells him the baby. Jacob has the birthright. Legally, legally, Jacob is in a place to be the firstborn because he sold his birthright. So, when I think about what Rebecca did, y'all got to go back and read the story, praise the Lord, because I ain't got time to tell you the whole thing. My time is almost up anyway. Praise the Lord. But, amen. Rebecca, eavesdropping on Isaac and Esau's conversation. And Isaac, who's old now, and he's blind, can't see because of age, is now beginning to think about his successor, who he is about to place in line. Not that he's going to die right now, but I want to go ahead and set it up so that whenever I die, the transition is going to be smooth because it is important that there is a smooth succession and a smooth exchange of power. And so he's talking to Esau and says, listen, Esau, what I want you to do, I know you're a good hunter. I want you to go out and go and find me some of that meat that I love. And I want you to go hunt it, get it, bring it, and I want you to cook it and dress it. He said, then I'm going to eat it, and then I'm going to bless you so I can go on and die. And so, praise the Lord, Esau, who despised his brother, has forgotten that he really don't deserve it anymore because he sold it for a pot of beans some years earlier, praise the Lord. It's gone now, praise God. And Rebecca, upon hearing this, goes to Jacob and said, listen, do what I tell you quickly. I need you to go ahead and dress up, praise the Lord, and I want you to go in there. I'm going to cook some food for your daddy, and you go in there and get the blessing. Because the Lord, uh, uh, Esau, praise the Lord, is getting ready to go hunt and bring him the food, and he's going to get the blessing. But you're going to be the one to get the blessing. Amen. And I want you to go in there and just do like I tell you. Act just like I tell you to act, praise the Lord, and you're going to get the blessing. And Jacob looks at his mother, which lets me know that inherently he is not a trickster. But he's doing what mommy told him to do. Can I talk to just a few minutes? Inherently, he's not somebody that wants to deceive. Praise God. Because he looks at his mother and says, Mom, if I do this, my daddy going to know who I am. Don't you know? I'm a plain man. Esau is hairy. And then I'm going to get cursed. And she says this. She says, my curse, your curse be upon me. Just do what I tell you to do. And he assumes. The identity of Esau. What is going through his mind when he is putting on Esau's clothes? When he is putting on hairy pieces of garment so that he, praise our God, uh, uh, feels hairy like Esau. And smells like Esau. And his mother is cooking the food because she knows what her husband likes to eat, praise the Lord. And he, he gets the food and he walks into his tent and says, here I am, Dad. I got the food that you asked for. Eat it and bless me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And, and for now, Esau, he's blind, but he ain't there. And he said, hold up. 
Who are you? I'm your son Esau. Hallelujah. Come here. Touch us. Feel it. Well, you, you, you feel, you feel like Esau. But you sound like that. After he eats the food, oh yeah, that's my son. <laughs> Hallelujah. And mama cooked it. And the Bible says, even gets close, he says, come here, let me kiss you. And he comes to get close to him. So he knows Esau smell like outside. He smell like the field. Come on, somebody. And Jacob, you know, he's smooth. He smell like old spice, praise God. <laughs> like he had done a hard, a hard day work. Or you shake Jacob's hand, and his hand is smooth. You shake Esau's hand, he got calluses because he's an outside dude, praise God. And that's how God, he, thank you, Jesus, hugs him, and he kisses him, and he smells. He says, oh, well, this Esau, he smells like the field. He, he was trying to use the other senses, but Jacob managed to pull it over on him and fool him, praise the Lord. And in fooling him, he messed around and got the blessing that he was already in line to get, praise the Lord. But because he, amen, was answering to the identity that somebody had put upon him, he felt it necessary to assume somebody else's identity. Even at the request of his mother. Because let me help you understand something. When you are firm in who you are, when you are firm in who you know you are, you will never let anybody make you act like you are not. It is only when your identity is on shaky ground with yourself that you can allow somebody to manipulate you to behave and act in a manner that is not consistent with who you are. When you know who you are, your mama can't make you act no different. When you know who you are, your daddy can. I, I know I'm still a daddy. He gave me some bad beats when I, but when I know who I am, I can't even let what my parents say shake who I am. But all of his life, he was told he was something that he was not. And he struggled with his identity. And when you struggle with who you are, you try on other people's identities. Oh, preacher of the sky, I'm doing better than y'all saying amen. You struggle, you struggle, amen. And so you try to do what other folk do. Let me, let, 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 let me try this, this weed here, you know what I mean? You know it ain't you, praise God, but it looks good on him. He making it look cool. You smoke it, praise God, you like to choke to death, praise God. Because you're trying to be something that you're not. How you see the other dude, and he's with this girl, he's with that girl, and he makes it, it's a stud. He makes that kind of identity look cool. You do it, and you get the girl pregnant, praise the Lord. How, and then you get this child over here pregnant, and, 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 and all of a sudden now the dude that you was idolizing, you're mad at him now because you got child support, baby. I'm preaching better than y'all saying that, man. I'm trying to help you understand, praise the Lord, that your identity is your identity, and the next person is there. Stop trying to be somebody that you're not. Stop letting folks make you feel bad because you don't behave and act like they do. Lord, I feel like I'm going to preach this way today. The devil, praise God, probably will make you feel bad because of who you are. Yes. I was working one day. I was working one day, and, and a young lady, we were dipping donuts. I was dipping that chocolate, praise God. <laughs> and you know, I wasn't, I wasn't the kind of guy that whistled at women. I wasn't the kind of guy that was always up in the girl's face, yo, 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 you know. You know. Let's, let's, let's rap, you know, all that kind of stuff. I know it's old time, man. Y'all say something else now, Frank. Uh, y'all say y'all talking. That's like we dating, but we really not dating. But, you know, I don't know. Frank. Anyway, Frank, you know, I was not that guy. I was not that guy. I, I was not the one that was always in the girl's way. I was the church boy. I was the boy, praise the Lord, that went to work, dipped the donuts, made donuts, went to church. I was the kind of boy that a girl could hit on, and I was so green and so stupid, I didn't even know she was hitting on me. <laughs> it, it, it would go over my head. I was, I was just that. Now, I think I'm kind of naive right now. My wife tells me, 
praise the Lord. And I don't know, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Y'all don't like my job, praise the Lord. Glory be to God. And so I'm dipping the donuts, praise the Lord. And so she asked me a question. She said, she said, you know, she's asking me, she's talking, she said, well, who do you like? I said, what do you, what do you mean? <laughs> so now my sexuality is being questioned because I'm not behaving in the mold. Oh, if she could just see me now. <laughs> Eleven children later.
deceitful and trickery. How do you know that today I want to tell you that the real victim was not Esau, the victim was Jacob. Praise the Lord. How did he was the victim, amen, because from the time he was born, he was told that he wasn't anybody special. Praise the Lord. And so he, in trying to act and to please somebody that he thought loved him, assumed an identity. But let me tell you something. When you begin to assume something that is not yours, you will struggle with it all your days until you get it right. Praise the Lord. Come on and say yes, Lord. Don't ever get mad with somebody that ever took something from you. Amen. That belonged to you. Don't call a grudge, hallelujah. Because nobody does wrong to other people when they feel good about themselves. It's only when you feel bad about yourself that you're able to do wrong to others. struggle in your life, the struggle in his life, amen, was trying to find out who he was. He went down and married, amen, into the family of his lady, and God blessed him while he was down there, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, but there was still a struggle of his identity, amen. You can be very successful in this world, but if you don't know who you are, it's still a struggle of your identity. Y'all ain't here. Having money does not give you peace, glory to God.
separate my family. I'm going to send some across and I'm going to send others here so that if Esau comes and tries to kill us, he, he, he won't get everybody. He'll just get a few. He's still trying to fix it and work it in his favor. I mean, when you've been done wrong for so long, you develop a control mechanism where you try to do things in order to make sure that nobody don't ever get the upper hand on you. But sometimes you just got to throw your hands up and give up and say, Lord, I I'm tired of manipulating folks. I'm tired of trying to change the people. I'm tired of telling one lie to cover up another lie. Hallelujah. Here I am, oh God. I'm coming just as I am. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It's time to take the mask off. They're trying to get you to be this person, and you know you're not that person. You try to act like that, but you're not that person.
Before I got saved, I was a fighter. I know you might not believe me now. But I was a fighter. I was such a fighter that it took me out of the regular class and put me in the slow class. You called me BDH. They said I was behaviorally and emotionally handicapped because I would fight you. If you were bigger than me, I'd fight you. If you were bluer than me, I would fight you. If you said something about my mama, I would fight you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I was my daddy's son. They called my daddy dangerous short. They said he would cut you to sin. I was my daddy's son. I would fight you. I would fight you. Oh, glory be to God. If you wanted to fight on your hand, I was little. And I might would lose a fight. But buddy, hallelujah, you would at least know that I was there somewhere. Hallelujah. You would come back with a mark on you to let you know I was fighting. Stop, y'all don't like my talk. I'm preaching to somebody that the devil jumped up on you. Thought you were going to pump you down. But I bet you better roll it up your Fried to the side, have fool you. Don't you let these earrings fool you. Don't you let these high heels fool you. I snap them off. I take my feet off. Yes, <laughs> 
was about who I was. You can't even tell me the struggle all this time was about my identity. Some of y'all right now getting ready to try to say that to go to Power Walk or you think you need money. Be nice. The Bible says, a fool and his money shall soon depart. Be you nice. get a billion dollars. Be nice. I promise you. Yes, sir. Give his money, it can be spent. That's right. That's right. We're trying to find a deal. But see, if I give you money, you can spend it. If I give you a house, you can lose that. If I give you a spouse, you can lose that too. But let me give you something that will never, ever be taken away. Let me tell you who you are. I made you. I know all about you. Let me tell you. Because see, if I know who I am, if I lose the house, I can get another house. I can lose everything I got. But if I know who I am, I can get it back. If a millionaire is in your spirit, you go bankrupt and lose all your millions. But let me tell you, if you already know who you are, praise God. Because see, your money is not what made you a millionaire. You got a wealth in your spirit. And because I know who I am in my spirit, you can take away whatever you want. By the end of the day, I'm going to be who I am.
This is your season. This is your time. Now is the time to know who you are. You have been called to the kingdom for such a time as this. And everything that you have went through, you've been through it to fix you so that you could stand in this season. I need you to hold your neighbor's hand. Leave nobody untouched. Bible says the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Some of you, the enemy has even tried to steal your identity through the things that you have been going through, trying to make you feel like that you're not loved by God. But today, we're going to pray strength into your life.
devil comes to trickery and deceit. And in a season where you're supposed look what you got, to be winning, he tries to make you feel like you're a loser. He tries to make you feel like, glory to God, you're not going anywhere. Hallelujah. But I need y'all to say something for me. This is my season. This is my season. Come on, open your mouth. Say, this is my season for change. Hallelujah. New is coming in my life. Hallelujah. Come on, I need y'all out there praying in the name of the Lord. Get ready to pray for you. And when I pray for you, your mind, that's been attacking your emotions, that's been causing you not to walk in freedom, is going to be broken off of your life. Do y'all believe that? Hallelujah. And whatever you need God to do for you on this altar today, God's going to do it for you. I mean, if you need the Holy Ghost, God can give you the Holy Ghost today. Hallelujah. If you need salvation in your soul, God can give you salvation. Hallelujah. He's pressed to do it what we need them to do. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to say one prayer and then I'm going to come and pray for you in the And when I lay my hands on you, the power of God is going to touch you. Don't be afraid. The power of God is just God's seal on your life. Let you know that he's doing exactly what he said he's going to do. Give it to the power. Father, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, y'all give me a different sound. Give me something else. Give me something else. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, as these stand before you, hallelujah, God, they have heard your word and they've heard your call. Father, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, the enemy has been talking to them. The enemy has been trying, oh God, to get them to give up on what you have promised. But this is the day that the Lord has made. And we decree and declare freedom in this house right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, move by your power. Move by your spirit. Set them free, oh God, to walk in the new of God. Do it by your glory. Do it by your power. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Come on, now.
gentlemen, you will have the strength to bring in the harvest that God promised you. And it is bigger than what you think. As big as you thought it was, it's going to be bigger than that. Because I'm giving you shut up. Oh, yeah, come my shut up. I'm going see you. Yeah, uh-huh. Shut up. Uh-huh. That's the glory. Shut up. Shut up. I'm going hold you. That's the power. Shut up. I'm going see you. That's the glory. Hallelujah. My son, I'm here.
somebody else. There's a mighty call on your life. You told her I'm And see, I'm going to tell you something. The enemy, the enemy has a plan for you. The enemy has your trouble. Oh, she's coming out of my seat. The enemy has a plan. Oh, she's coming out of my seat. The enemy has a plan. Oh, she's coming out of my seat. The enemy has a plan. A charge on your name. Thank you. 